Hey guys, my name is Christian Taylor. Welcome back to Crayler Tech, and today I'll be taking a look at the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, first, I have a bit of explaining to do. You're probably like, Christian, why would you buy a MacBook Pro now? We all know that Intel Macs are coming. Did you buy this before WWDC? Nope, I bought it after, and I bought it because you need a Mac when you need a Mac. My 2013 MacBook Pro has had a hard time holding a charge, has a broken trackpad that only registers every other click, and it's in desperate need of an update. So I made the choice to buy an Intel MacBook, figuring I'd stick to it for two to three years, sell it, and eventually get an ARM Mac. I'm not really interested in being an early adopter of ARM Macs, because I know how much of a saga I go through just by updating my version of macOS every year. Programs break, bugs are introduced, and with the huge redesign that is Big Sur, this next update is going to be particularly painful. So to have Big Sur forced on me as soon as I buy a new MacBook when I'm not necessarily ready to update, on top of brand new hardware and a new architecture with ARM, yeah, I'm gonna sit it out for a little bit and let Apple work out the issues. I forged ahead with getting a 13-inch MacBook Pro as originally planned. I've used a 15-inch MacBook Pro ever since I started using Using Mac, but the thought of a smaller, lighter package that's powerful enough to handle basic 4K video editing in Final Cut was appealing. I knew I was sacrificing power for convenience, but that's something I was okay with. So I placed my order for a 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro with the 10th gen i5, 32 gigs of RAM, and 512 gig SSD. I fell in love with the form factor of the MacBook as soon as I got my hands on it. Could it really be? A MacBook that just works enough to handle productivity tasks and basic editing in an ultra-portable package? The MacBook was surprisingly zippy on any tasks I threw at it. The revamped Magic Keyboard is everything I know and love about the Magic Keyboard on my 2013 MacBook Pro, and I'm so glad I dodged the unfortunate butterfly keyboard phase. The touch bar isn't anything new, but it is new to me, and I'm not really a fan of it. I'll tolerate it. I want to like the concept of it, but in reality, I find that I'm slowed down without the standard function keys there like I'm used to. Sure, you can disable the smart controls and kind of get a function row back, but there's no haptic feedback when you tap something. It just feels broken. Did I press the button or not? I just want to turn up my brightness. But anyway, people have had opinions on the touch bar since 2016, and it's nothing new. The trackpad is also nothing new, but it's an absolute pleasure to use. I love the Force Touch trackpad. It takes macOS to the next level, and Apple trackpads are a huge reason I'm crazy about Apple laptops. The built-in speakers honestly blew me away. I had zero expectations for laptop speakers, especially for the 13-inch model, but they sound really good. I find that if I'm in an open area where I'm not going to disturb anyone, I'll just stick with using the internal speakers instead of wearing headphones or AirPods, which is not something I would always do with my old 15-inch. So here it is, a small, light, portable Mac with an uncrippled keyboard, leisurely trackpad, great speakers, and snappy performance. This laptop seemed like a great buy until the honeymoon ended. Now there are three issues I have with this laptop. Two of them are likely to be vastly improved with ARM Macs, and you've heard people talk about them before. But one of them is an issue no one is talking about. I didn't find a single mention of this issue in any of the review videos I watched, and I'm here to shed some light on it because it's a serious problem. So for the first two issues, the battery life is not good and the Mac gets really hot. Yep, we can just blame these issues on Intel, right? Surely Apple Silicon will greatly improve these problems next year. Maybe, we'll see with time, but I do have a feeling that our Macs are going to address these problems. But regardless of whether it's Apple's fault or not, it doesn't leave a great taste in your mouth to spend over two grand on a laptop that gets really hot by you barely doing anything and a battery that drains at a fast rate. It just didn't feel as new as I expected or hoped. But still, I was willing to overlook these quirks and keep the laptop until I discovered the fatal flaw. Editing in Final Cut Pro. Here I am editing a basic 4K video and all of a sudden, beach ball. The screen locks up, the program stops responding, but there's no explanation for it. 
The fans are barely on. Intel Power Gadget shows me that the CPU is barely being used, and I have enough RAM available. I do have a maxed out model with 32 gigs of RAM, so it would be unreasonable to assume that hardware was the bottleneck here. Look, I knew the MacBook hardware was totally capable of the basic tasks I was throwing at it. So what was the problem? Ah, a software bug. I looked on the Apple forums online and saw post after post after post in the Final Cut thread saying that other 2020 13-inch users with the 10th gen Intel processors were having unexplained freezes. The community collectively chalked it up to a software optimization problem that Apple needs to fix, but the MacBook has been out for two months now. When is Apple going to officially acknowledge that there's a problem and fix it? At this point, I had enough. I'm sending the 13 inch back to Apple for a refund. I wanted to like this MacBook, but the minute I found out that Apple's own in-house software can't even run properly on it, I'm not spending my hard earned money on it. Uh-uh, that's unacceptable. I've got an open box 16 inch MacBook Pro on the way that I'm gonna try instead. And as for the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro, I can't recommend it. It's clear that Apple is having quality control issues with both software and hardware. My friend who got an identical unit around the same time as me had his completely die on him within a week. The machine straight up laid down, wouldn't boot no matter what, all his data was gone, it was just a complete brick seven days after he got it. Perhaps these quality issues are related to the challenges we're all facing right now, and if so, I get it but I don't get Apple putting out a product that isn't ready to be used. I'd rather them have simply added the magic keyboard and sold the thing with an old generation of processor if it means it's gonna run properly. As I mentioned earlier, this issue is specifically with the 10th gen Intel processor, so it's clearly some kind of software hardware optimization, because you can get a 13 inch 2020 model with the old 8th gen Intel processors from the 2019 model, and those models don't have the issue. I recently bought a 2019 27-inch iMac, and I know many in the tech community might judge me for it. It's such an old design, it has thick, clunky bezels, and we know there's a new iMac coming with iPad Pro-like designs very soon. Why would you buy a 2019 iMac now? It's because I need a Mac that works without quirks, and the current iMac design is rock solid and proven with reliability, not to mention being able to upgrade the RAM. Okay, maybe I bought it because I could upgrade the RAM myself. I mean, you gotta admit, it's a great value. So as boring as it is, I'll be sticking with my 2019 iMac and 16 inch MacBook Pro for a few years and let Apple work out the inevitable problems with the upcoming ARM transition. Luke Miani just put out a video talking about first generation Apple products. He got me thinking about how many first generation Apple products are a public beta test in a way to see what works and what doesn't. I'm just not okay spending thousands of dollars on machines that are bound to have hiccups and issues. So for the next few years, I'm going to be happily sticking with my old, clunky Intel Macs. Because they just work. Unless it's a 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro with a 10th gen Intel processor. So I guess Intel Macs don't just work. I guess you need to specifically research the programs you're going to use with the specific model down to the processor of Mac. You know what, this is this is just ridiculous. Macs have gotten ridiculous, but I'm gonna be using them anyway. So anyway guys, what do you think of the 2020 13 inch Mac? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like this video, do be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers, so I would really appreciate your support. With that said, I'll catch you guys next time.